Thank you guys for having me here today. Um, I actually have uh, sold food to, uh, you know, Rich's Naj restaurant. So um, that's one of the ways that we partner with local restaurants, uh, selling our fresh produce to their restaurants. Um, my husband and I own Evans Farms in Bridgeville, and it's a third generation family farm. Um, unfortunately, both of his parents have passed away, so a lot of the times, People come and they ask for the owners, and you know, I say, you know, we are the owners. They are like, oh no, your parents must be around somewhere. Um, so, you know, we're very young to own um, a farm of our size. We till 2,000 acres throughout Kent and Sussex County in Delaware. Um, and I have helped manage our on farm produce market for the eight years that we've been together and have seen a huge customer demand in a locally grown product that's fresh and refreshing and cold. You know, they don't want the cantaloupe that's sitting out on the stand that's warm or the one that's fresh picked just come out of the field that's warm. They want the one that's been in our cooler and they want us to cut it up right there on the go for them to take with them on the road. Um, we're located on 404 uh, in Bridgeville, so we're one mile east of the Route 13 intersection. So we get a lot of the beach traffic um, by our farm and our on-farm market. And um, this demand is something that has just grown and grown and grown. So we've been looking for a way to meet the demand. And uh, what we came up with was a product called Sorbet. Um, we thought, you know, what better way to satisfy this need than with a product that is, you know, lactose-free, gluten-free, fat-free, and based on our local produce offering. Um, our initial idea, our, one of our biggest things that we grow at the farm is watermelons. So we um, wanted to do like a watermelon sorbet. Um, we also do a cantaloupe sorbet um, at the Frozen Farmer now. So this has been an idea of ours for the past four years. We've been working really hard to you know, make this come about. And in the time, you know, every local creamery has popped up here and there and everywhere. And we're like, OK, every year that goes by, we're missing out on establishing ourselves in this industry. So um, our idea this year um, was, you know, hey, we have to hop on board this train somehow, some way. And what we had initially thought was to operate in a mobile food truck. Um, so this is actually our food truck. And my mom, Joellen, is a big part of our business as well. Um, she has 30 plus years in accounting. She was um, the executive director of finance at the Harrington Casino and actually uh, quit her career field to uh, help us with the frozen farmer. She's the financial side and also the production side. My mom's been making homemade ice creams for 10 plus years. And um, you know, our, the kids in our family, instead of asking for birthday gifts, they've been asking for my mom to just bring her ice cream. So um, it's, it's that good and it's, you know, it's amazing that um, you know, she's got such a passion for it. So when we shared I, our idea of sorbet, you know, my mom was all on board. Um, she also does the recipes in our CSA program. We send out a newsletter every week and we call it Mama Joe's Farm Fresh Recipe. Um, she's what we call our resident Mama Joe. She uh, does Sunday suppers for us on the farm and, uh, you know, just I think people have enjoyed receiving her recipes through our CSA program on the farm. So uh, she just seemed kind of like a natural fit to uh, be our business partner in this effort. We went away to school in February to learn how to make our products. We went away to the Ice Cream University where we uh, have since uh, hired our teacher, Malcolm Stogo, who's kind of world renowned in the ice cream industry um, to be our personal consultant for the business. Um, he taught us the ins and outs and everything, but the biggest thing he taught us was that we cannot operate a production facility in a mobile food truck. So that sent us for a tailspin in February because our whole entire business plan changed. Uh, we came back home having to break the news to my husband that we had to find a production facility and find it soon. So um, we looked for warehouse space and rental space and everything was super expensive. And um, Heritage Shores has been a longtime partner of our farm. We sell produce to their past waters restaurant. And um, the VP of Brookfield Homes over there and I have become good friends over the years. And I was sharing her our idea with her. And she said, hey, you know, we've got the snack bar behind the pro shop vacant. And we love you guys. And we want to be more friendly to local businesses. So why don't you operate your shop out of, out of our snack bar? And so that kind of gave us the production facility to accommodate the uh, mobile food truck. 
And um, really the purpose of that, that facility is just to stock this mobile food truck so this mobile food truck can sell on our farm. Um, the fact that we get a double retail location over there in Heritage Shores is an added bonus. And um, you know, since then, we've been approached by our, rest, our grocery store partners. Um, Evans Farm sells to about 40 grocery stores throughout Delaware, Maryland, DC, and Virginia. And um, two of our major retail chains have actually approached us about our, our sorbets and our ice creams, uh, wanting to sell them in their um, local grown goods section. So that's been an exciting prospect for us. And um, wholesaling our product has kind of become a new phase of our business plan that we've really been growing lately. Our products include um, the sorbets, as I said, and then we also expanded into ice cream and a product we call Nice Cream, which is a part sorbet, part ice cream mix. We're also selling fruit popsicles and uh, smoothies and made-to-order juices as well. I'm out of time. <laughs> It does go quick, Rich. Uh, question, questions for Katie. Brenda? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I'm, I'm proud about the collaborations that you have going with Heritage Shores. Are you um, utilizing any other economic development resources as you grow? We um, are not, actually. We um, have been to a few like DBS meetings, and um, we actually got fairly lucky. My husband um, partners with Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit on a lot of things and, um, you know, the loan process was something that was um, kind of time, time consuming and we knew we just had a couple months to move on this to be open by June. So um, we went through a private route to uh, secure a, a small business loan. Any other questions? I know some people were eating. <laughs> now, taste testing. What, yeah, what is this the, is the cantaloupe sorbet that everyone's sampling. What is the cost associated with uh, producing the product and then the cost of purchasing the product? Um, well, our products are a little bit higher price point just because we're using real fruit products, and with that comes a lot of production time. We're cutting up the real fruit every single day. Um, so there's, it's labor intensive. It's not like a lot of the traditional creameries where they're just mixing a base with a mix and then you have a flavor. You know, we're mixing a base with real fruit that has actually had time into cutting it. So um, we retail our half pints at 350 our pints at 4.95, our quarts at 9.95, and then we sell um, by the scoop, made-to-order scoops at our home um, at our home retail location at Heritage Shores too. Any other questions, Katie? Oh, I'll be back to you. Katie, all of Bridgeville is proud of you. Thank you. Um, what happens in January? There's no fresh fruit coming off the fields. We um, have actually uh, been freezing a lot of our fruit uh, strawberry season. Before our strawberries went out of season, we were doing nothing but just cut, 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 cut. Um, before we even opened our doors to the public, uh, we were storing um, fruit away. And we're doing the same thing right now as we're coming into you know, local cantaloupe season. It's, this has been a really great avenue for us as farmers because with farming, there's a lot of wasted product. You know, everybody wants their cantaloupes green for some reason. Um, they don't want them soft and ready to eat right now. They want them so that they have to go home and set them on their counter for two to three days before they can actually eat them. Same thing with peaches. Um, so the softer peaches, the softer cantaloupes, um, those that we would traditionally mark down for a dollar or something at our home market stand are the ones that we're taking right over to the frozen farmer kitchen and cutting up because they're the sweetest ones. Um, they're the ones that are going to make the best end product. So this has been a great avenue for us to, um, you know, store away in the off season um, some fresh fruit too. We've been freezing a lot. Sugar free? Our products aren't sugar free. We've had a lot of requests for that, um, but we are actually working on a sugar free product. And last question. Mm -hmm. I heard you briefly say business plan. Do you have a business plan? We do have a business plan. I can't tell you how many times that business plan has changed since February, um, and it's still changing, 
But um, yes, we certainly do have a business plan. That's something that we um, have prepared over the winter months um, and going forward with this. Wonderful. Are there other questions? Do you do events? We will be doing events. Um, our, our mobile truck is actually on its way to us right now. It's not here. Um, we had it made in Florida and um, it should be here by Friday. So we're, we're very excited to uh, receive our mobile truck and we will be doing events. Um, we haven't committed to any just yet. We want the truck in our driveway before we actually sign up for anything. Um, but when the truck isn't at events, it will be parked at our home farm to do uh, fresh scoops there on our 404 location. And then you know we're doing the fresh scoops at the uh, Heritage Shores location as well. How, how did you go about um, selecting someone to, to design and do the wrap for you on the uh, truck? Um, the wrap we actually worked with um, their design team uh, on, and I wasn't 100% satisfied with the concept that they were coming up with. And I actually sat down with my two and a half year old one afternoon as she was coloring, and I took her colored pencils and just drew it by hand. Um, this is the inside of our mobile truck. And um, so I sent that to our um, sign guy. We use impact graphics on the farm and um, Zeke Wing. And Zeke kind of put my hand sketched drawing into um, a fully designed wrap and sent that to the company. Um, so the concept of the wrap is actually taking the tractor, plowing up, you know, the watermelon and the, the strawberries and the um, cantaloupe, and then you have the uh, beet growing out of the ground into a juice glass, and the transition from the field to an actual tangible product that you will consume. You know, the apple on the tree pouring down into the um, apple juice glass, the fruit popsicle, you know, the fruit uh, nice cream, and the sor sorbet there, too. I was just wondering what type of um, marketing you were doing to get word out. Are you really relying just on people passing your 404 stop and, and stopping there or are you reaching out on Facebook? Just kind of your marketing plan. That's a great question. Um, my background is actually in public relations and marketing. Um, I have a degree in PR and worked um, briefly for the Delaware Farm Bureau as my first career job doing their public relations and before I transitioned um, to a company called TSN Communications. We're based out of Virginia. Um, I work from home full time. And knowing that we had this venture going this year, I talked to my boss and I said, look, I either have to quit my job because I'm so needed on the farm this summer, or I need to do like fall and winter only um, because I'm needed here spring and summer. And he said, well, I'm willing to sacrifice you. Uh, you know, spring and summer, so you have a job here in the fall and winter when you want to come back. So um, my job has been hugely helpful in help it, helping us launch, you know, this business and get the word out. They've helped us distribute our press releases. Um, I write press releases professionally for com companies all over the country. Um, we've had a lot of local media coverage um, that has kind of come free for us um, from doing the press releases. Um, I actually was on my way here this morning and did like an impromptu radio interview. Um, and, you know, a lot of the local media coverage that we've secured has been, you know, just through my public relation background. We do have a website, thefrozenfarmer.com, um, that we're promoting this company through. And um, also, we're, you know, really active on social media as well. Instagram and Facebook has been integral. Yeah, congratulations, Katie. Thank what you. are your plans to continue production in the winter months? Um, well, again, I mean, this is how our business plan is kind of evolving and changing, you know, day to day. We are planning to be open through the fall season because we have some really cool fall flavors that um, we're very excited about. Um, maybe like some sweet potato sorbet or um, ice cream or ice cream, um, some pumpkin ice cream for sure. But, um, you know, our, our farm really kind of winds down. Um, in the fall. Again, our main, main traffic is the beach traffic. So when school starts back, um, the farm really kind of calms down. And we anticipate that the frozen farmer will a little bit as well. We certainly hope that the public, um, you know, will support us enough locally. And certainly, um, you know, if we do get into these grocery stores, that will be something that will be in production for our stores and all of our wholesale avenues throughout the winter months, um, but probably be closed for retail through the winter months.
for Katie. Excuse me. I just uh, think it's a really cute idea. And even when the winter months we are closed, will that be available to go to the beaches or to the special events? And all Certainly, that? yeah. We're still, I mean, because we'll probably still be in production for the winter months, we will still have our mobile truck available for those months as well. And I should mention um, that our mobile truck will be getting into the farmer's markets that we participate in too. Um, you know, I've definitely talked to Georgetown Farmer's Market about the truck coming, Milton. Um, Evans Farms pr uh, participates in four farmer's markets uh, Wednesday through Saturday. Um, and, you know, this is just kind of going to be a neat, you know, different farm to table relationship. You know, we are actually are the farmers and the chefs themselves. Um, we do a lot of farm to table uh, demos with our restaurant partners, and um, there's the big farmer and the chef competition. Um, in Sussex County now and in Wilmington every year too for the March of Dimes and um, we're looking forward this year for our first year as being um, wearing both hats. We've always partnered with um, different restaurants for this competition which just draws a huge crowd for a great cause and um, we're so excited to uh, really wear both hats for the first time. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Just make my way over here. Walk off that sample I just had. <laughs> you are advertising low fat and it's healthy and this sort of thing. Have you ever considered partnering with all the many gyms that are opening up in the area? We have actually. That's a great question. Um, in working with our menu, um, because we're farmers, you know, we don't have a lot of restaurant experience. I mean, yes, my mom's our resident farm chef, but um, she's never done it professionally. Uh, we actually worked with Ryan Cunningham from Abbott's on Broad Creek um, with some of the flavor pairings. He gave us some great suggestions. Um, he was our very first meeting. And then we have partnered with um, the powerhouse gym in Seifert, Scott Owsley with Sweat. Um, Scott's provided us a lot of smoothie recipes. <laughs> you like Scott, he's a great guy. Um, and he's also told me like what vitamins go well with you know what vitamins and you know what fruit has what vitamins in it and you know this packs a punch of this nutrient and that kind of thing. So um, Scott's been really helpful in helping us you know develop our menu and we do plan once we get ourselves established and I should say that we opened officially to the public on June 18th. So we're a relatively new company. Um, once we get comfortable enough with making our own products, uh, Scott has given me a huge list of his smoothies, his signature smoothies, that we are going to offer on our menu as like weekly specials and then um, give uh, members of the sweat program a discount on those offerings. So um, we're definitely open to that and I'm very excited about that partnership. Um, yeah, as I said, June 18th was our grand opening, and um, we had a really huge turnout that we were super happy with. We served about 270-some people roughly in about an hour and a half. So, um, you know, the product goes a long way when you're, you know, making this. And, um, you know, we were just overwhelmed by the support that the community has given us with, with this business. And again, I mean, you know, you mentioned with the breweries that there's so many, and people say, um, you know, you know, why are you opening another brewery? And we've kind of faced that same question with the ice cream avenue of this. You know, we're nestled in between two competing creameries. We don't necessarily look at them as competition because we have a different product offering. It's more of a health avenue. Um, all of our main ingredient line is going to be fresh fruit based. Yes, we have a chocolate and we have a vanilla just because that's the, you know, average American favorite. But, um, you know, I, I think there's enough love to spread around in the dessert industry. And, you know, if you have that little niche that you fit into, I think that really will set you aside, too. No other comments? Katie, in closing, what can we do as a community to support you and help you grow? Um, you know, just help us spread the word. Come out and, come out and see us at our Heritage Shores location. Um, you know, we invite you all um, out to uh, see the mobile food truck for the first time this weekend on the farm. Uh, we're very excited to have it for the 4th of July weekend. That's our usually busiest weekend of the year at the home farm. Um, we sell all of our own fruits and vegetables there. And we grow pretty much everything under the sun at Evans Farms except for tree fruit and potatoes. 
And we're very honest with what we don't grow ourselves, um, and we partner with other local farms to provide those offerings. Uh, we're working with DDA and ShopRite, which is one of our grocery store chains, for a 400-person um, farm tour in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, Tia Smith is also on the tour. And, you know, Smith family is a very good, good friends of our family. And, you know, we're going to be using Tia Smith's peaches in our peach blossom ice cream. So we're working to see if, you know, our mobile food truck can, you know, serve that farm tour that they're going to be dining in their orchard. So, um, you know, the relationship among farmers um, is very cooperative and we work, you know, hand in hand with each other. We have to, just like any entrepreneur. Um, so please just, you know, come out to the farm and uh, see the mobile food truck, help us spread the word that we're here. And, um, you know, we appreciate all the support. <laughs>